Great day. Great day. It's another avenue for learning. Again, magandang magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. We are officially live at Dental Marketing Philippines Facebook page. For those who are watching right now, I really appreciate your support. Uh, congratulations because uh, this morning we really had a technical problem, but we are now back and we're very much uh, uh, really, really ready to give you a, a great presentation for today. Six, today is 6 p.m. in the Philippine time, but uh, for those who are watching internationally in other countries, I really appreciate your support. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, whatever time is it. It's really a great uh, opportunity for us to get together and bring you the best topic that we could possibly have during this pandemic. Uh, I hope you are well. I hope you are safe. I hope you are healthy because really no one is prepared for this pandemic. And even the, even the other countries are, you know, uh, this particular virus belittled their healthcare system. So there will be a new norms. There will be a lot of uh, changes in your dental practice specifically. But before that, I'm sure you're excited. I'm also very excited, even this morning, to, to hear what, what, what would our guest speaker would talk about uh, really this, uh, this tonight. But before that, I would just like to really uh, continue with uh, who are we, who we are, and really, usually really what we do. So I'd like to uh, make mention that we are Dental Marketing Philippines, and we are, we are giving you a tool. Uh, for social media, website, chatbots, artificial intelligence. We provide lectures. We provide seminars for free. Ito po ay binibigyan natin sa ating mga kababayan, sa mga mahal nating mga dentista na magkaroon ng learnings while we are experiencing this enhanced community quarantine. And we are very lucky today. But just to give you a brief overview of what we have done, we have inter interviewed several uh, guest speakers. Na-interview po natin si... Uh, Dr. Stephen Almonte, that was April 7, and uh, we're able to get to know the leadership in time of crisis. Tinanong ko po siya, no holds bar. If you want to take a look at the replay of this, you can just go to Dental Marketing Philippines page so that you'll be able to know also and understand yung tinatawag nating welfare and trust fund. Yung mga uh, calamity fund, uh, fire insurance, life insurance. So, yan. It's also your opportunity to ask questions and to see really what's going on inside your organization. Makikita nyo rin po yan sa sa YouTube channel ko, Rothschild Piruis MBA Marketing, yung replay po niyan. You can always check it out there. And also, last April 10, I was able to uh, bring you this uh, wonderful topic, uh, pandemic, its effect to your dental practice and dental business. This was actually April 10, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. Usually, 10 a.m. po tayo naglalabas ng mga webinars. But uh, tonight, it's a very special day, 6 p.m. po tonight. So, uh Again, I would just like to make mention that dentists are so exposed and physical proximity is 99%. So it's really, uh, really would really would want us to really be safe. So this particular topic is really a recommended. Uh, anyone can share this. So it's also your opportunity to share it to your friends, dentists who would like to be protected now in times uh, when, when uh, the enhanced community quarantine are lifted and they can also start practicing with the new norms and which will be discussed by our guest speaker. And this is my recommendation. Now, first pace today. Now, today we are at home. We basically are would like to, to to we are spending a lot of time for family, but also we must spend time to really learn to do marketing. At the same time, we have to learn about enhancing your discipline, whether you're doing cosmetic, aesthetic, implant, and other discipline of dentistry. On the second phase, after this extreme enhanced community quarantine, we we don't know if there will be announcement tomorrow. After ECQ, we have to think, pray, relax, and get back to work slowly. Don't rush yourself back. No? Ibig sabihin, wag po tayo magmadali na commit agad. Wag po tayo magmadali na dumami agad ang pasyente nyo. You just go branding today, and uh, it will just go back in normal time. I know it's going to take uh, quite some time for us to recover that, uh, to recover our great practice before this ECQ, but it will go, uh, go, go back to normal. Rest assured. No? So don't worry relax and you're still going to be a dentist for life so that's a very good news now so third phase so when we are done with this we do recovery so be patient stay focused and have a fresh graduate mentality and you're eager to practice but you know you have several uh, several uh, hesitation at the same time you wanted really to provide good service to your patients so if you want to get to know of of this uh, replay lecture you can go to the youtube channel youtube.be yan po nakikita niyo po sa screen you can take a photo of that 
And you can go back to my lecture, Global Dental Business, where I discuss also the dental trends up to 2024. It's really a good business if you're in the dent dental world. So there will be, there, I've discussed a few, no? FDA protocol, that we will have more protocols. We'll have more uh, in terms of uh, recommendations today. And uh, this is that's why I wanna really want, want to hear this presentation tonight. Now, also, we were able to discuss about telemedicine. So this is the in today in the medicine world. We were able to talk to Dr. Luis Etuel Ruiz. And we also learned how biomimetic restorative dentistry can be a value-based dental practice. Nakita po natin dito that, that uh, hindi lang pala specific specialty ang practice mo, but at the same time, you can do more business in terms of marketing if you are going to have this particular niche of your market. So Dr. Gillespie, uh, thank you very much. If if you want to get to have a review of this topic, you can also check out the YouTube channel. You can get this one. No? And on April 18, 17, we're able to discuss the untold secrets of geriatric mobile dentistry. Now, we know for the fact that we do have a lot of geriatric, sorry, geriatric population in the country. And you know, by 2021, 7% of the population is more than 65 years old in the country. So again, these are all uh, receiving pensions. They would want to be beautiful. They want to look good. So this is a great opportunity again for the dentists out there to go and practice geriatric mobile dentistry. And last April 18, we're also we're able to discuss with the president of Global Dent USA, discuss about bleaching, everything about it, materials, cases, and specifications. So watch out there. Uh, you can also check it out in Facebook or in Dental Marketing page. And you can also see the review of, uh, of that uh, uh, discussion or webinar that Mr. Pabia brought to us. And on the 24th, right now, I'm also inviting all of you uh, this is going to be 10 a.m. We're going to have an introduction to Magic Core, minimally invasive implants. So this is brought to you by IBS Implant Magic Core. So for those who would want to venture into a practice practicing implant, now uh, alam po yung guest speaker natin ay practice ng implant now, but another level of implantology. But uh, this one, if you want to do, uh, we're going to introduce you to the product of introduction to Magic Core. This is a great product, so watch out for that. That's going to be April 24, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning Manila time. And I'm going to be doing, this one is the three uh, individuals from Philippine Advocates and Consultant Trainers. I know that all of you dentists out there are also experiencing some anxiety. You're also questioning when I'm going to get back to earning, when I'm going to get back to learnings. But we are also experiencing trying times. So today, uh, this particular lecture, uh, discussion, April 27, 10 a.m., we're going to have Mr. Malvin Denlasan talking about faith, and Mr. Ekon Malik, the customer service guy, will be talking about hope, and I will be Rochi Ruiz talking about love. So this will be uh, from the Bible verse, faith, hope, and love. So this is a great learnings at the same time, uh, uh, reflection for all the dentists out there. So this is gonna be April 27th. And tonight, now I'm very, very, very excited because I'm going to introduce no, uh, my my one of my one of my one of my favorite one of my favorite dentist is uh, I'm going to introduce one of my favorite dentists. So the topic today is what can dentists do to protect themselves and their patients. So as you can see, you can see her at the back of the screen. So uh, I'm going to introduce her. No? So she is a founder. She is a graduate of Manila Central University, a founder of International Association of Oral Medicine and Toxicology Philippines. And she is also the founder of Biomimetic Dentistry Philippines. Oh, great, great discipline. She is also the past president of Quezon City Dental Chapter. She is also the past president of PAED, the Philippine Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry. Napakadami pong ginagawa ng ano, ang ating bisita ngayon. Pero ngayon, I just uh, I just uh, select some of the some of the key uh, contributions to Philippine dentistry. She is also the proponent of Philippines to mercury free uh, practice. So without you know without hesitation and without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Lilian. El Ebuen. Magandang gabi, Dr. Lilian. We're all very excited. 
Doktor, ah. Say hi to our Maganda viewers. Maganda ni. Roche. Mr. Roche. Luis. Yes. Maganda din po sa ating mga viewers. <laughs> okay. So... First time ko. <laughs> Doktor, <laughs> first time ko mag-webinar. Ang ganda-ganda ni Doktor. Ang daming nanonood sa atin. Bago tayo magsimula ng official presentation mo, I would just gusto kitang pabatiin sa 100, 139 na nanonood sa atin from Iloilo, from uh, Visayas. Uh, thank you very much po. Batiin mo naman sila, Doktora. Um, magandang hapon or ne, gabi na, no? 6.09 na ng gabi. So magandang hapon po sa ating mga televiewers, mga uh, fellow dentist na nag nakalockdown <laughs> on quarantine ngayon. Uh, Pareho tayong walang kita. So, uh, I think yeah. this is the best time that we start to prepare. Now we start to prepare on how to get back to our clinic. Kasi, hopefully, matapos yung lockdown natin. Hmm. Sana. Doktora, I would just like to... Uh... Welcome po. I'm happy to see you all here in uh, in we the webinar. All the way to saan? Visayas? Wow. Visayas, Mindanao, we have Pangasinan, we have Mindanao. Uh, there are 200, there are 100, North, wow. 177 watchers. It's a pleasure so, to see you all here. Salamat po. So, uh, let's get started. So, uh, Doktora, uh, ibibigay ko na sa yung floor as we go along. For those who uh, tune in, don't hesitate to ask questions as we go along with the presentation of Dr. Lilian. I'm, you know, I'm very privileged that she is with us tonight. So let's start, Dr. Lilian. Take it away. I'm going to help you out in the presentation. So I'm going to be out, but I'm going to try to help you out to this slide. Okay, Dr. So, go ahead. Play na lang, no? Play. So we try to, um, okay, again, good afternoon. Bakit wala? Wala, Dr. Sa ano? Umpisahan mo sa... First slide. Sorry. Yan, Okay. Go ahead. And good afternoon ulit. Oh, good evening to everyone, my fellow dentists, colleagues. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, marketing, uh, dental marketing webinar of uh, Roche, Dr. Mr. Roche Ruiz. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be part of this. Uh, topic uh, for this evening is COVID-19. So what can dentists do to protect themselves and their patients? So tayo yon. So this is the best time for us to get ready to prepare ourselves to on, are we really ready to get back to the clean, clinic especially hindi natin talaga alam kung when is the when is uh, the covid virus will hit us or it could hit us tomorrow we don't know di ba minsan nga ako nananaginan <laughs> parang sir nahirapan ako huminga nahirap ako yung pala kaya ako lang uminom ng tubig <laughs> yeah so uh, these are just practical uh, uh, notes that I, I wrote. And, syempre, kinukha ko rin siya sa Center for Disease Control uh, Center. Yeah. So, COVID-19 is coronavirus disease, uh, as we all know. No, uh, It started in 2019, December, November, December, ganyan. So, it is now declared by the World Health Organization as global pandemic. It's a global pandemic. So, lahat ng buong mundo. Parang tayo ata yung number one ngayon na pinakamarami sa East Asia ba? Yan. So, this is just to share to you some guidelines on how to manage dental clinic and patients and to make working dentists safe for from any risk. So, we're at risk, at high risk actually. So, the transmission of the virus is mainly through inhalation, ingestion, direct mucus contact, and salivary droplets. So it is also critical to remember that the virus can survive on hands. So see, pwede mag-survive sa hands, sa skin natin, and objects and surfaces that were uh, that are exposed to infected saliva. So kung nag-shower yung kausap natin, masasalo natin sa skin natin or sa damit natin. And that virus can stay there for several hours. Diba? So eh kung nahawakan natin siya, tapos kinamot, uh, no, hinawakan natin yung pisngin natin or kinamot, kinamot ng ilong or we touch our eyes. Si ang entry point ng virus is through oral, nose, and eyes. So, yan talaga yung kailangan natin protectan. And can you see, can you imagine how we work in the clinic directly close to the head or the face or the mouth ng pasyente natin? So, tayo yung at least. Yan. 
So let's go first to the some definitions, infection control. This is called also by um, OSHA, no, um, exposure control plan. So it is, a it is a required office program that is designed to protect personnel against risk of exposure to infection. See, that's why yung uh, ating professional group, tayong mga dentists, we are not... Uh, we are being restricted, diba? Even the government is restricting us to go to our clinic and treat patients only, to treat only patients on emergency cases. Well, oh, uh, for one, I I never went to my clinic since March 13. Actually, March 13, yung huli kong clinic day. And then 15. Yeah, hello. Hindi nag, hindi hello. nag move, move. Bag move, move. Ule. Yung ating slides. Hindi nag move? Ay, uh -huh. nasa... <laughs> Sorry, Nasang ah. slide ka na. <laughs> Yan, infection control. Infection Sorry. Control. So, okay. So, nakita ba, na, umabot naman si infection yes. control. Pwede yes. na yan. Yes. Okay. So, next, sterilization. Yan. Okay naman? Nakikita na? Yes, 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 yes. Hello? Yes po, yes. Nakikita Yan. na. Yan. Okay. So in we need to sterilize. It's important. It is a, a prime a prime um uh, step, primary step for us dentists because we are in the medical dental uh, practice. So it is important for us to sterilize our instruments. So we use physical or chemical procedure to destroy all microorganisms, including substantial numbers of resistant bacterial spores. See, um may mga maraming bacteria na resistant din eh. So, tapo, ay, saan ba pinipin? Okay. So, ay, uh, pasensya na kasi hindi siya nag-play ng dere-derecho. So, I have to click the slide on the side pala. Okay. So, destruction of path, yung disinfection naman is about, is about the destruction of pathogenic and other kinds of microorganisms by physical or chemical means. So, this is the process of removing or killing most, but not all viable organisms. Kasi, syempre, pwede tayong mag-disinfect ng ating kamay. No? We disinfect our hands. Pero, kaya niyang ma mapatay yung certain bacteria, pero hindi naman niya, kailangan, uh, hindi niya kayang patayin yung, yung cells ng, ng body natin. So, that is disinfection. Yeah. So, next slide. So disinfectant, these are the chemical agents uh, used to in inanimate objects to destroy virtually all recognized pathogenic microorganisms, but not necessarily all microbial forms. So ito nga, gamit tayo ng alcohol, pwede tayong gumamit ng, ng disinfectant na wipes, yan. So these are disinfectant agents. Okay, and there are modes of transmission. Uh, uh, yung contact with body fluids and saliva. So, may spray lang tayo, matansikan lang tayo ng isang gapiranggot na, na, na microbes or na, na um, aerosol or saliva. May shower, may umubo, may, may uh, um, sneeze. No? So, possible na yung sneeze na yun can travel uh, in, in a parang two meter distance eh na hindi natin na nakikita yon So, yung mode of trans tra uh, transmission is through the body fluids or even blood, especially sa blood. Kasi when, when we work on the clinic, minsan may blood, so if may COVID uh, virus yung patient, nahawa tayo. Indirect contact with contaminated instruments of surface. So, syempre, even the surfaces, pag nahawakan natin, yung hawa, yung natalsikan, then pwede natin ilipat sa katawan natin yun or ma-ingest natin. Contact of mucosa, of the eyes, nose, or mouth with droplets. See, yung droplets, pwede rin mag-spray kasi sa eyes natin. So, that's why we need to wear goggles. Inhalation of airborne microorganisms. Sabi nga nila, yung ni WHO, ang, may, ang virus daw ng COVID-19 is now airborne. So, I'm not sure. Siguro, airborne lang on a certain, uh, on a certain uh, level na para kung kailan like uh, nag-sneeze yung patient, yung, yung tao, and kaya kailangan natin i-maintain yung social distancing kasi at least mga two meters away from the person para umubo siya. Oh, cover. Yan. <laughs> so, yun yung airborne. Pero siguro it stays there for some time, pero uh, after a while kasi, ang COVID virus, 
mabigat siya eh. Heavy siya. So, it really drops down on the surface. So, why is infection control necessary in dentistry? Siyempre, dental staff and patients may be exposed to a wide variety of pathogenic microorganism. Hindi lang naman COVID yung kailangan natin iwasan. But, of course, even if wala nga COVID eh, dapat pinapractice natin tong, ano infection control na to in our clinic. But uh, thanks God to COVID in a good way kasi at least now we are, we para siguro tinuro tayo ni Lord na, oh, ayan, kaya talaga, practice na, na, na ninyo mga dentista ang ang infection control, which I know uh, sometimes I miss some infection control uh, management things, no? And we're not perfect. Siyempre, minsan nakakalimutan din natin. Pero now we are more cautious. We are more um, uh, uh, we are more cautious in avoiding this, uh, not only the virus, but different types of bacteria. Yeah. So ito nga yung transmission, no? Ito yung cycle ng transmission from the clinic or from the patient. If patient comes, goes to your clinic, goes to our clinic, siyempre kung meron siya, infected siya, ng, ng virus or you know there are patients din na hindi siya sila affected uh, hindi sila symptomatic asymptomatic yung yung virus sa kanila eh. so they're just carriers so we don't really know kung sino talaga yung merong virus di ba so better na magingat na to everybody na even to our friends yeah <laughs> mga close friends it's not easy to kasi it's not easy to get uh, infected uh, it will cost our life so we have to protect ourselves. Yan. Kung meron mga pasyente, tulad yan, may mga pasyente na sumasakit ang ngipin, kung kaya naman natin mag-prescribe na lang ng, ng medicine, uh, ako, inuwi ko talaga yung prescription pad ko. So, talaga pag meron sakit ng ngipin, I prescribe uh, sa, uh, mesi, sa, ng medicine and then I take a photo of it and then send it to the patient. So nakakabili pa rin naman ng gamot yung pasyente. All that. Pero syempre, uh, hindi rin naman nila tayo masisisi kung ayaw din natin pumunta sa clinic. Diba? Kasi we have uh, also a responsibility to our own health. It's also important. So, syempre, sa clinic, ang cycle ng ng, ng bacteria or ng virus, after the patient, uh, if yung patient merong uh, virus, pwedeng matransfer sa atin during the procedure. And after that, hindi lang sa atin, what about our staff? And also, not only our staff, pag-uwi natin sa bahay, sa family natin, pag-uwi ng, ng staff natin. So, nahawa na yung mga community, di ba? Yun. Nahawa na yung mga kapitbahay, kamag-anak, and everything. So, and, kaya mabilis yung uh, pagkalat ng virus. Yan yung cycle. Yan. And then, ito nga. So, ito siya, yung transmission, patient to dental team. And then, the dental team to the patient. And then, patient to patient. Kasi, if the patient... See, now we have to practice social distancing, di ba? So, pati yung mga pasyente natin, hindi pwedeng appointment magkakasunod in 30 minutes or in one hour, sunod-sunod na pasyente. No? So, dapat may distancing then before the next patient comes into your clinic. Diba? So, yeah, dental office to the community, yung transmission on, and then community to dental office to patient, so, and all that. So, it's a cycle of transmission. We can't avoid it because we don't see the virus. We don't see the uh, uh, we don't see COVID. Yeah. So the transmission of virus is mainly through inhalation. Yeah, nga, as I said earlier, no, the direct mucous contact with saliva droplets is also critical to remember that the virus can survive on hands, objects, or surfaces that were exposed to infected saliva. Yeah. So there are effective ways to prevent transmission of disease or virus. Yeah, so, see, sinama ko ang disease, hindi lang virus. Kasi hindi lang naman COVID, yung COVID-19 yung i, ang kailangan natin bantayan dito. All types of virus, all types of bacteria is important na hindi tayo mahawa. We cannot afford to get sick. Kailangan pa natin pabuhay sa mundo. <laughs> yeah, first, we need to do hand washing. Importante. Dati hindi ako masyadong madalas maghugas kasi nga after using the gloves, di ba, parang naku, nagdala yung hands ko pagka, nag pagka nag-wash ko ng hands par parate. So what I do, just palit-palit na lang ng gloves. Pero now, when we go back to our clinic to practice, it, every each appointment, kailangan palit ng 
mag, magpalit ng gloves at the same time, wash hands and then put a new fr fresh gloves. Well, marami naman tayong gloves, more lang yan. No? So, uh, ma although marami tayong mga kilala rin na hindi nagpapalit ng gloves, they use gloves for like all day, huwag na tayong magtipid. Anyway, uh, uh, patient is paying for the service that we do. So, it is important also, uh, it is just but right to give what is due for what our patients pay for, diba? So, even the saliva ejectors, I heard some, hindi ko na kung saan, saliva ejector, nire-recycle pa, disposable po yun. So, pag nagamit na yan, throw it away. Anyway, ang mura lang naman nun, diba? So, get rid of those. So, wash hands. And then, of course, important to wear gloves. Yeah, wear gloves, face mask, protective eyewear, protective head cap. Dati, ayaw na ayaw ko nag-head cap eh. Pero, I only wear head cap actually pagka nagmo-mercury removal ako. So, you know, ang practice ko, I practice mercury-free dentistry. So, I have a dedicated room where I do mercury uh, management. So, doon lang ako naglalagay ng head cap. Pero beyond that, hindi talaga bihira ako maglalagay ng head cap. Only during surgery. Pero now, I will, when I get back to the clinic, I will see to it na every day. Na, like, see, you don't use only one head cap in a day. Dapat every patient, isang head cap. Pag uwi ng, alis ng pasyente, new patient comes in, get another new head cap. Anyway, muna lang naman ng head cap. Hayaan mo nang magulo yung buho. Di ba? Okay lang yan. Ang importante, we protect ourselves from any possible droplets na didikit sa clothing natin. Even the protective eyewear. Yan, you see, protective eyewear. I only have a few protective eyewear in the clinic. Medyo anim na piraso lang yun. Pero it's not enough. So I had, we have to order more, more protective eyewear. So not only us, na, na practitioners, we wear the protective eyewear. Siyempre, the patient needs to wear also. So, nako, magasos when we get back to the clinic. Wala na tayong kinita for more than a month, no? And now, eto, nagdadatingan na yung mga gastos. Maglalabas na tayo ng mga kailangan natin bilhin. So we have to, it's an investment. So we don't, I don't know. Sa akin, I've been thinking uh, on my part, sa face mask pa lang, even face mask, you know, hindi mo masabi kung, alam mo na, hindi lang isang, isang pasyente, isang face mask. Isang pasyente, isang face mask. Even the head cap, head cap, isang pasyente, isang head cap. Even the goggles, yung goggles, isang pasyente, isang goggles. Siyempre, yung goggles, hindi mo isatapon. Kung <laughs> may tapon yung goggles, i-sterilize mo, like cold sterilization, pwede naman yun. And you can reuse it. Yeah, pwede naman yun. No? And then, yung, yung uh, PPE, PPE is very important. See, there is chaos now ordering many PPE buong Philippines. Na, buong mundo, actually. Pero, sa buong Pilipinas, ang dami nag-order. Kailangan natin mag-order PPE, maubusan nga ng PPE ang mga hospitals natin, di ba? So, let me uh, move uh, move forward. So this is the ideal PPE for COVID-19. Kaya ba ninyo magsuot ng ganyan sa clinic? Just for me alone, looking at it, ang init niyan, di ba? Mainit siya, tapos, I mean, everything is covered. And, well, hindi mo naman suotin to protect yourself. You, protect, you need to protect your life. Pero siguro, kailangan yung air conditioning na sa loob ng clinic Malakas, as in malakas. So, um, I, I feel or I think, no, no, for me, I don't think I can wear that. But of course, I or I still ordered uh, some PPE for my for my uh, emergency use, just in case merong pasyente na papasok only for, like, uh, doubtful ako na possible COVID patient yan ha, or something. Then, susuotin ko yung PPE siguro. Sacrifice na yun. Pero, if hindi naman ako doubtful or what, but we really don't know, diba? So, this is my usual setup. Nasa screen ba? Yeah, this is my usual setup. Dati yan. Pero, see, this one alone is already my, I, this is already PPE. I have many uh, PPEs like this, uh, different colors. Yeah. No? So, yung assistant also gets to wear one during, ito yung, um, yung, yung, yung picture na to is, about uh, mercury management. Uh, ito yung, I have, ito yung sinasabi ko earlier na meron akong dedicated dental amalgam removal room. 
So that's where I manage Mercury. So actually, matagal ko nang pinapractice yan, mercury-free dentistry, you know, but that's why I push the government to sana ituloy na yung no more mercury uh, fillings sa dentistry board exam. So I I heard, sabi, na, sabi nga ng DOH sa akin, patutuloy na raw, so I don't know when, sana mapirma na. Anyway, the point here is, yung setup, if you notice, look, we are all covered. See, we're all covered except for these two girls here. Hindi sila, ano, wala silang face cover. But here, with me, I have a full face cover. So, talaga respirator siya. The new norm will be this na, after the ECQ. Yan. Ito na talaga magiging norm. So, I was thinking na, parang, okay. So, iisa lang yung evacuate, air evacuator ko. This air evacuator kasi picks up yung aerosols na na emit ng ng mercury vapor and then syempre paglabas niyan uh, filtered out na malinis na siya you know? so this will be our new norm kagas mas tayo and everything hirap huminga niyan anyway let's move on we need to sterilize also di ba no yung sterilization process when we sterilize our instrument I hope everyone has autoclave. Di ba mandate naman yan na? So, we autoclave. In my practice, I not only autoclave, I, after I autoclave, I store it in the UV light cabinet. So, pag in-store yun doon, na stay, na, na nagiging um, stable yung sterility, yung instruments. However, when I perform surgical procedures, Yung sterile instrument doon sa UV uh, cabinet, I still pull it out and get it sterilized, freshly sterilized sa autoclave for double wala o ilang. So, yun yung ginagawa namin ng assistant ko. And the next, so these are the stages of sterilizing our instruments. First, we pre-soap. Siyempre, we, we have to clean first yung mga debris and everything. We clean and wash. And then, siyempre, we need to... Uh, control yung corrosion and we need to lubricate like yung hand pieces and all that, no? Then yung packaging, we have to pack the uh, instruments in in packaging um, sterilization, sterilization pouch. Then we sterilize sa autoclave. And then after sterilization, yung sterile instrument, we store them in the UV light cabinet yeah, before you use it for your patients. Storage and care of sterile instruments, storage area should be dustproof. See, dapat dustproof. Hindi yung okay na sterilize mo na siya, nasa autoclave na, nilabas mo na, nilagay mo lang sa drawer ng cabinet. Pag nilagay mo sa drawer ng cabinet, hindi siya dustproof. Kahit nasasara mo yung drawer na yan, believe me, it is not dustproof. Yes, it could be dry. It is well ventilated and it's easily accessible for retin dental uh, use. However, Sana yung storage niyo hindi dapat dustproof siya. So, sterile materials should be stored at least 8 to 10 inches from the floor. See, may specific uh, measurement yan. 8 to 10 inches from the floor or at least 18 inches from the ceiling and at least 2 inches from the outside walls. So, uh, check na lang yung storage niyo. And other storage... Um, uh, Items are not stored in any location where they can become wet. So, syempre, hindi pwede i-store na malapit sa lababo. So, dapat away from the lababo, from the water. It should be positioned so that package items are not crushed, bent, or compressed. So, syempre, kung maliit yung ating um, UV light cabinet, siguro kailangan natin ng mas malaki pa kung, kung marami na tayong instruments or, or what. So, hindi pwedeng siksikan sila. Kasi pag nagsiksikan yun at napuncture yung sterilizing pouch, then that's not sterile anymore. Ganun siya. So, dapat un, un open dapat unpunctured, uh, bent. So, malini siya pag nilabas mo siya sa storage mo. Yan. So, outside, okay, if you're going to ship or send yung, yung mga uh, laboratory, in, laboratory job, for the laboratory, 
ilagay naman natin siya sa karton. So, small boxes, yan, no? In small, sterile container. So, this is a number one complaint of dental technicians. Minsan, narinig ko yun, eh. Narinig ko yun, kasi nakikipagkwentuhan din ako sa kanila, eh. Sasabihan ng technician, rabi nga, doktora, di na ba nang, pinadala ba naman dito yung case ni, ni ganito? Dugudugo ang pa, nakakadiring hawakan. So, can you imagine the type of practice we do in our clinic? reflects also in the things that we send when we send out our uh, cases to the laboratory. Nakikita nila na, ay, hindi mo matumi yung practice nito. Diba? So, napipintasan tayo doon. So, we have to clean it. Even yung impression, impression, uh, impre rubber impression, diba? or model cast, yan, pinisin na natin. Para pag pinadala natin, matuwa naman yung technician na gagawa dun sa ngipin, hindi naman natin sila makukontaminate or hindi natin sila mahawa ng any form of bacteria. Diba? So, ultraviolet chambers, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, ultraviolet chambers uh, are now commonly used for storage of instruments. And formalin also, pero I, I don't like formalin kasi yung formalin, it uh, corrodes my instrument. So, uh, anti-formalin Okay, so, sa dental chair naman, so if you notice these uh, blue sheets, ito mga blue sheets na to, in fact, pati yung dental chair, eh, dapat yan lagyan ng um, cover. Yan. Every patient, pag upo yan, lagyan ng cover. Tapo, di ba? Parang, ano, no? And then here, these blue sheets here, yeah, fresh yan parate bago gamitin. And then after gamitin, lilinis yun ng assistant. And then here, let me share to you my, my uh, chair, may, my unit kasi meron siyang self-sanitizing um, function. So let me share to you the video. See dito, uh, every, every patient, uh, not every day, not every, uh, at the end of the day, every patient, ilagay mo lahat dito, yung, in, yung hand pieces, and uh, yung mga gamit mo, high speed, low speed, everything, even the triple, uh, triple uh, airway syringe, kailangan, even the suction, uh, kahit yung base lang ng suction, i-sterilize natin. Maybe your chair may ha not have this type of function, but even so, importante rin na kahit walang ganyan, I suggest na uh, i-gather yung yung tips nito or yung end uh, yung base ng hand pieces and then you sterilize everything every patient kasi yung bacteria they travel also through these fluids yeah so we don't want the bacteria or we don't want the virus to travel okay now here is a short video clip ulit on how my assistant does it no so see yung patient dito uh, yeah, I, honestly, I was in the clinic last week. So, <laughs> kumuha ako ng nag-impression taking kami and then I took the bite of my patient. Wala akong bite. So, I'm going to make the patient some uh, prosthesis. So, sa check-up na yun, after the check-up, no, tanggal lahat ito. Remove the plastic barriers. Yeah. So, kung wala tayong plastic barrier for our dental un dental chair, kung saan muupo yung pasyente, what I do, I spray it with uh, Clorox. Yun. It's available in the grocery. Clorox and then wipe. Yeah. So, this is what my assistant does. Yeah. Paano naman siyang diring dire? <laughs> Ganyan na siya ngayon. Parang naging cautious na rin siya, no? Okay. So here, and then from there, now in between patient, diba? So I also have this steamer. So you, the steam, diba, sabi na nila, ang virus, ang, ang, ang virus, ang COVID, uh, hindi niya kayang ma-withstand ang heat. So siguro ang high heat steam will help, diba? Kasi at least malang yung surface ng handpiece, no? Uh, Ma-steam. So this is what I, what my assistant do. Yan, may steam siya. Yun yung UV light cabinet na maliit. Yan, that's a steamer. So that steamer is also good to sterilize, like for example, to sterilize or clean or disinfect yung impression tray, 
yung um, veneers ninyo na ikakabit sa ngipin, or even uh, uh, it is also good for uh, wax. Kasi dapat yung wax natin high heat, di ba? Para hindi yung ano, mabago yung, yung ano. Anyway, may wax, uh, high heat wax for the bite. Or kung hindi yung high heat, I have um, rubber uh, rubber based na um, bite registration um, material. So yun na ngayon. And that, you can steam it. Hindi siya magbimelt. And pag in-steam yun, at least pag pinadala sa laboratory, malinis yung uh, malinis yung uh, by registration, malinisyon model cast, yon. So, ever since naman, I, I've had this team for a long time already. So, medyo, iba na nga yung distributor niya. Eh. Anyway, so, very useful ang steam. I'm not selling it, but I'm promoting it in a way for you to, at least, dapat meron tayong steamer or something to disinfect, help us uh, 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 to add sa disinfecting agents natin, heat is a good disinfecting agent. So, in fact, uh, at the end of the day or after my patient, after every patient, no, ang ginagawa ko na, I steam also my hand, my, my, my fingers. nag steam ako. It suits my joints kasi syempre, hindi na tayo bumabata. No? So, I'm aging also. Kaya, yung uh, steam, when I pass it, uh, when I steam my hands, uh, it suits my my skin and my joints. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> moving on. Rapid time tapos. Disinfection. Disinfection is always these two steps procedure. Yeah. So first step, initial step, involves vigorous scrubbing of the surface to be disinfected and wiping them clean. So kailangan talaga skoba muna ng malinis, maigi, no? malinis. So maganda dapat yung disinfecting agent natin. Then the second step involves wetting the surface with the disinfectant and leaving it wet for the time prescribed by the manufacturer. Kung ano yung, uh, yung uh, disinfecting agent na binili nyo, kung ano, sinabi niya, leave it there for a few minutes before you you wipe it dry, then you know, depende sa kung ano yung gamit mo. But you know, propylene glycol wipes are good enough. See, if you notice, the formula ng mga wipes na yan, no? Asa na ba yung wipes? Meron akong wipes kanina dito na hawa. Baby wipes. <laughs> See, baby wipes is the same thing. It has profiling glycol wipes. So, see, it is safe for our skin, safe for everything, and it kills some amount of bacteria or virus. So, and wipes will do. Siyempre, dental tayo. Pag nilagyan na ng dental yung brand na yan, good as dental, dental price na yan. Diba? But the spray here is basically Clorox. Yan. Ito. Ito yung, ito yung ginagamit kong Clorox. Ito, you can buy this at the grocery store. Yan. So, siyempre, at the clinic, dapat very visible ang mga hand sanitizer. So, sa waiting area, dapat may hand sanitizer. Doon sa reception table, dapat may hand sanitizer. Doon sa tabi ng dental chair mo, may hand sanitizer. Doon sa lababo where you wash your hands, dapat may hand sanitizer. So, all over, even the restroom. Patient always go to the restroom. So, after they wash their hands, hand sanitizer. They use the hand sanitizer. Yeah. So, Important yan. Clorox is good for, uh, these agents are good for the surface. And I use this for the dental chair now. Yan. And then next, okay, so ito na. Diba, sikat na sikat na yan. Ang daming dental supply naglabasan na about air evacuator and everyone is in panic mode. Everyone is in panic mode. Sabi nga nung isang dental supplier, Doktora, grabe, hindi ako makapaniwala. Ang dami ng order sa amin. So parang, Okay, so, sige, ang dami. And air evacuator, what does the air evacuator do? It suctions the aerosol coming from the patient's mouth. So, yan, it, they come in different form. Mer okay, honestly, ang, ang air evacuator is very noisy. Maingay yan, maugong yan. So, in purchasing evacuators, maybe we look at the decibels, kung gano'n kataas o gano'n kababa yung decibel na, oops, naglulobat ako.
have to plug it in. Sorry, guys. There. Starting. Okay. Going back. Yung, yung noise coming from the air evacuator, may ugong yan. Maingay. So, if you can get the least ugong na decibel that you can get, you, yun yung may recommend ko. Kasi yung luma kong air evacuator in the clinic, this is my air evacuator in the clinic. Let me show you. Sana ba? Yeah. That's my air evacuator in the clinic. This one. This is an old one. And it's been very helpful for me because it helps me suction or pick up yung mercury vapor from the patient's mouth while grinding. Kasi during grinding of amalgam, mataas ang vapor emission yan, mercury vapor emission yan. It has been proven and it tested. I, I, I did uh, already scientific study about it, pero uh, it's not officially published, but it's only for our uh, organization's uh, uh, information na mataas yung emission ng mercury sa amalgam pag ginagrind natin siya. Of course, mercury is odorless, it's tasteless, it's invisible, hindi natin nakikita. And I've had this for the longest time. Kaya nga, itong air evacuator na to, nandito lang siya sa, dent sa isang maliit na room ng dental clinic ko. Kasi that is where I manage mercury. Kasi pag inom ko ang air evacuator, maugong siya. Can you imagine if you purchase an air evacuator that's really noisy, kahit konting ini lang. See, yung noise nga ng, tell me, yung noise nga lang ng autoclave, kaya ba ninyo i-withstand? Autoclave, while sterilizing, di ba? Maugong na, maingay. How much more? Kung ganun kahina na ugong ng autoclave will uh, be at the background, will be on your side na umuugong for several hours, for an hour, at least one hour or two hours. Ang sakit sa tinga noon. Scientifically, kung na-expose ang ears natin to uh, constant sound or constant ugong, mabibingi tayo in the long run. So, hindi na tayo mahawa ng virus, pero bingi naman tayo. So, might as well choose uh, a good one. So, do not panic by do not um uh, uh do not buy agad agad na hindi niyo pinag-aralan kung ano yung magandang uh evacuator air evacuator to pick up that aerosol in the clinic see kaya uh be very choosy also and anyway, this one is uh, this is my old air evacuator but i plan to get another one kasi nga kailangan ko rin para sa um general dentistry room. This one is only by mercury. I will not expose that mercury evacuator in my general dentistry room. Kasi pinuntahan na yan eh, ng DOH. DOH came to my clinic before nag-study sila. Minesure nila yung mercury vapor in the mercury room. And they were able to pick up high levels of mercury vapor. And hindi ko dadalhin yan sa general dentistry room ko kasi I don't want to be exposed to a lot of mercury. So anyway, COVID tayo. We don't want to be exposed to COVID uh, aerosols. So we must have an air evacuator. Yan ang importante. Nako. Maraming magtatalo-tatalo ng dental supply. Anyway, here's another one. Ozone generator. Ozone is also important. Ozone is an air purifier. It purifies the air. Kasi siyempre, okay, in your waiting area, kung ang pasyente, uh, nandun, okay, nag, uh, nagsasalita siya or what, siyempre, sabi nga ni WHO, ang virus, ang COVID, is now airborne or whatever. So, but it's not uh, highly proven yet. Huh? But, so I'm not really sure. Pero, we want to clean the air in the environment also. Yeah? So not only from bacteria or virus, but also other uh, microorganisms. So ozone generator helps. I have my ozone generator sa banyo kasi cancer, well, may mga cancer patients akong kinahandle. So cancer patients uh, 
take this uh, anti-cancer medicine. So when they go to the restroom, paglabas niyan, yung fumes ng cancer, um, ng, can ng cancer nila, na, 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 ng bibi nila, na in, uh, nilabas doon sa CR, kakalat yung doon sa loob ng banyo. So, importante na na ozonate yung environment doon. So, we have an ozone generator in the banyo. We have an ozone generator in the mercury room. We also have an uh, ozone generator in the waiting area. Yeah. So, anyway, by the way, going back, balik ko pala doon sa ito. Let me just show you. Medyo maliit lang, hindi kita eh. So, here, this is my ozone generator. Maliit siya. Very portable. I bought it in the US. So, syempre, wala yan dito sa Pilipinas. Matagal ko na siyang ginagamit. So, I just changed the filter. So, here at the bottom, at the side, sa baba ng paan ng pasyente, merong air ionizer naman yan. It ionizes the air habang pinapurify ng air purifier yung air. And also here, this is high suction. So, hindi tayo magre-rely sa high suction ng dental chair. When we do surgery, di ba, dalawa yung, yung saliva ejector natin. Isa for the saliva ejector, isa yung high suction. That high suction is not good enough to pick up the uh, aerosols of our hand pieces and our patient's saliva and our patient's whatever virus na kakalat niya or bacteria na or microorganisms na nasa kanya. Hindi enough yung high suction na yun. So that's why we, there will be escapes. So yung escape na yun, sasaluhin ng air evacuator. Yan. Okay, namamali lang ako ng figure. So going back, yun na nga, ozone generator is also important. But it is your choice naman kung you get or not, pwede naman. Maraming uh, ozone generator. Of course, yung mga pinakamura, available yan sa mga online market. Uh, but those are toxic. So be very careful also because when you ingest the ozone and the ozone generator is not a good quality ozone generator that binilang natin siya sa uh, online market. So mura lang, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So yung, air, yung ozone na nilalabas ng ozone generator mo is toxic. You can still use it, but once you use the ozone gen that ozone generator, you have to close the room, close the toilet, wait for at least 15 to 30 minutes before you can use it again. So, ganun ka toxic yung ozone generator. Kung yung ozone generator mo, yung mga tagpo 4,000 lang, yung mga ganyan, yung mga mamurahin lang. So, let's not buy the cheap one. It also affects our life. So, anyway, going back again to the PPE naman. Ito yung PPE yung namin sa clinic. We have been doing this kind of PPE for the longest time. Yun lang, hindi kami vigilant in wearing the visor. <laughs> to be honest, hindi kami nagbabisor pa. Pero matagal na yung visor na yan, nasa cabinet. <laughs> pero nilabas na namin nung meron na kami patient, emergency patient. So, yun. Kailangan naka-visor na tayo. And there. Not only us, also the patient. So what we do with our patients naman, kinukumutan namin sila. So, bibili pa tayo ng maraming kumot. <laughs> kumot. So, kumot, syempre, manipis lang na kumot. But then, this should be washable. Okay, now yung PPE na to is not cotton. It should be repellent. Kasi kung cotton yan, i-absorb yung bacteria and it goes into you. Ma-absorb mo rin yun. Dapat repellent siya para hindi mo ma-absorb. So you see, wearing this PPE, this type of PPE, yeah, pinatali niya sa likod, you know? So we use one per patient. Isang PPE. And then it's washable. You can autoclave it. So it's washable. So ako naman, I don't autoclave it. I wash it in a separate, uh, in a separate load, so washing machine. And then, ikukula ibibilad sa araw. So, mga wala yung bacteria. We don't really need to autoclave it. Kaya, yung panic buying natin about PPE, looking for oh, autoclave, mo ba yan? Pwede ba yan? Ano? And all that. So, mga, ano no, uh, sales, um, marketing sales na 
may pipi, dapat autoclavable yung, yung ano mo, or washable and all that. You don't really need to get an autoclavable PPE. This is a PPE. This is our PPE. And it works well for us. Especially me. Kasi look. Can you imagine? Makas, ano yung damit mo sa loob? And then you wear this PPE. Manipis na nga yan. Repelag. Pero, mainit. You see, look. You notice the two tiny electric fans at the back? Hangin ko yan. <laughs> I need air. Kasi mainit eh. To think na yung pasyente, giniginaw na yan. Nagkukumot yan talaga. Talagang humihingi sila ng kumot kasi maginaw sa loob ng treatment room ko. So you see, and they, uh, I recommend itong ganitong klase ng uh, face mask. It has face shield na nakadikit na doon. It's a little bit expensive, but it's okay kasi patient pays naman. <laughs> Based naman. So, what it does is, syempre, disposable din yan. And, yeah, I wear head cap. And also, dito hindi ko lang nasuot yung headlamp. So, when I use my headlamp or yung loop or when I look at the microscope, pwede ko na siyang masilip kahit meron akong face shield. Kasi kung yung face shield, katulad nito, yung sa assistant ko, then uh, wearing the headlamp or uh, doing the microscope is impossible. Okay. So, this is more convenient for uh, for me. So, sa tingin ko, okay naman. Then, of course, gloves, one for every patient. Sometimes, I use two or three gloves na in one patient. Yeah. And then, next. Okay. So, standard precautions. Precautionary measures lang. Kailangan natin ng immunization. Or, at least, ma-immunize ba lang yung... Uh, Sana lumabas yung immunization ng virus no, against COVID. Patient screening. We need to screen our patient. Uh, if you can email me, uh, if you can email me, I have a questionnaire na uh, um, actually I got it from Dr. Um, Arlisa Aguilu. So she got it from her friend na expert from National Institute for Health. So it is a very good questionnaire. So you can edit that para sa questionnaire ninyo for your patient before you allow, you let your patient sit on your dental chair. So patient screen, we screen the patient. Uh, in my clinic, well, I don't see many patients naman talaga ever since, no? I only see parang two, three patients in a day, no? Uh, so maganda yung social distancing nila. Kasi once a patient is in the clinic, kanila yung buong clinic. Parang so, <clears throat> uh, point there is, pagbalik natin sa dental clinic natin, hindi na pwede yung pila-pila. Kasi kailangan ng social distancing. So, what about the dental chair? Magkakalapit yan. So, at least dapat mga two meters apart kung, kung marami tayong dental chair. Di ba? And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, practice hand washing. Now, pag pumasok ang pasyente, we also let the patient wear the foot cover uh, booties. Yun, yung, yung blue, blue booties kanina, yung suot ng assistant. Where is that? Yan. Yung pasyente may suot din ng ganito dapat pag pumasok sa clinic. Kasi you don't know kung saan siya umapak and all, no? So madumi sa labas. Make sure na malinis yung apak, yung, 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 yung shoes niya, at least protect it with the shoe cover. Yan. And then, yeah, hand washing is important. Barriers for protocols, barriers for your dental chair. If not, just use Clorox, it's fine. Pero barriers kung saan kahawak, even your computers on your side, lagyan ng barrier. Madaling tanggalin yan. Eh, hindi naman niya nakakasira ng, ng keyboard and all. So, surface disinfection is important. Of course, we have been practicing this needle and sharp instrument on, for safety handling. Di ba? Meron tayo waste management program for our needles and sharps and blades. Yeah. And then, radiographic asepsis. Oh, radiographic asepsis. Asepsis. We need to practice Asepsis also in doing, uh, taking radiographs. Laboratory asepsis, like what I said, malinis naman, ipapadala natin sa laboratory. Huwag naman yung may malaway-laway <laughs> or mayroon pang tugo, no, nakakahiya sa dental laboratory. Next, we rinse also under running water. Yung, uh, yan, yung impression or whatever, yung mga cast, you rinse it under running water. 
uh, to remove the saliva, all your instruments, rinse it under running water, you brush it. Yeah. Rinse thoroughly with tap water to remove the residual disinfectant also. And uh, after disinfect, right, you soak it. And then you rinse again to remove the disinfectant. And then you put it in the packet, uh, autoclave, and then put a uh, uh, sterilizing pouch, and then put it in the autoclave. So there is no single disinfectant as ideal or compatible with all items. So iba-iba ang disinfectant ang bawat gamit natin sa clinic, di ba? So we must have like, okay, air, uh, um, Clorox, we have uh, we have uh, disinfectant for our um, instruments, we have disinfectant for our diamond burst. Look, yung diamond burst, lagay nyo sa bird block, one bird block per patient. Every appointment is a bird block. And then sterilize. Another bird block. So we stock up on birds. Yeah. Uh, dami kong stock ng birds. Hindi ko maubos-ubos. <laughs> I've had it like pa. Tayo ko na hindi bumibili ng bird na ano. Ang binibili ko na ng mga birds, mga special birds. So clean and disinfect delivery of prosthesis to patient. So kanina, no? Makita niyo yung steam. I steam the, the prosthesis before I install it or I trial fit it sa patient's mouth. So yung patient appreciates it eh, really. Kasi sabi niya, wow, parang ang sarap na pakirandam. Kasi it suits their gums kasi warm. Diba? So parang, doko ano ba yung, ano, yung mga gano'n? So tinatang din yun, it's a steamer. It's a steamer. So if you have that steam, steamer, you steam your your uh, prosthesis bago mo ipasuot sa pasyente, it's good kasi it helps you clean uh, or disinfect the surface of the prosthesis, di ba? So, syempre, for laboratory jobs naman na dumating, no, for ready for installation, uh, before uh, installing it, soak it in, uh, put it in a plastic container, soak it in the in uh, diluted mouthwash, ganyan, and then, pag ikakabit na sa pasyente, tsaka nyo lang siya i-steam. So, it gives that uh, refreshing uh, feel also for your patient. So, yeah, so, Place it in plastic casing filled with diluted mouthwash. And of course, never forget to label. Yeah, lapit na tanatapos. Other standards make treatment sessions more efficient and allow time interval between appointments. So, like I said, in between patients. So, kami, when I was telling my assistant nung last week, sabi ko, okay. So, okay na yung distancing ng pasyente natin, pero. Now, I don't like to work in the morning anymore. I'll only work in the afternoon. So, parang isa or dalawang pasyente na lang in a day. Nothing more. So, morning will be all sterilizing or cleaning and disinfecting all surfaces in the clinic. And in the afternoon, 1 o'clock on clinic time. So, that will be my protocol now. So, I don't know with you guys, pero syempre, depending on how you guys want to practice in your clinic. But it's, it's just a tip. Remove unnecessary items for the dental procedure area. So, syempre, uh, kung hindi mo naman kailangan yung ibang mga equipment sa tabi ng pasyente, huwag mo na ilagay doon. So, itatabi mo, ilayo mo yun. yun. So, we also pre-plan the materials needed for dental treatment. Bago pa lang tumating yung pasyente, alam mo na kung ano yung mga materials or instruments na kakailanganin mo. Hindi yung kung kailan lang na kinilangan mo, biglang mag- Pahanapin pa ng assistant kung saan nakalagay or whatever. Diba? So, planning. Start planning ahead. And then, i-ayos na yung dami. So, pre-arrange the tray setups for routine of frequent performed procedures. Yeah. And then next, use individualized sterilized burr blocks. Yan, nabanggit ko na kanina for each procedure. If indicated, have the rubber dam set up on the tray. So do you use rubber dam? I use a lot of rubber dam. Um, rubber dam uh, is important para kung ano lang yung ngipin na gagamitin natin, yun lang yung i-expose natin. Uh, ang gagawin natin, yun lang i-expose natin. So if you're not doing other teeth, eh, i-isolate mo na. Rubber dam helps. It's also a barrier. So you see, kahit palang dyan, um, ang dami na natin put protection na kailangan gamit. Ang dami nating barriers na pwedeng gagamitin. No? Review patient record before initiating treatment and place radiographs on the box on the box or on the computer. So, 
pag alam mo darating yung pasyente, make sure na okay. So, like, may secretary o Ms. Zara, i-ready mo na yung CBCT ng pasyente natin. Ganito, darating siya. I want to see the CBCT before I perform. May mga gano'n, no? So, also, you need to prepare the assistant, your personnel. Make sure na malinis din sila. Kasi, may magkakaroon din sila, magkukommunicate din sila sa pasyente. So, it is also important that they are protected. So, eto. So, avoid crowding sa waiting area. Kung isa lang ang pasyente, ang mga kamag-anak, bawal pumasok. <laughs> Ganun talaga, no? no? Bawal pumasok ang mag-anak sa so, treatment room. Treatment room is right over here. So, the waiting area is here. Okay, so, pero... Dapat dalawa lang ang pwede upo dito. Dati pwedeng tatlo. Pero apat actually pwede. Pwede nga siksikan yung lima. Pero hindi. Isa lang or dalawa lang ang pwede. From this time on when I go back to the clinic. Yun. To entertain themselves, pwede naman manood na lang sila ng Netflix. Yan. Next, PPE for COVID. Are we really ready to wear this? Are you ready to wear this? I'm not ready. Nag-hot flashes na ako eh. <laughs> Kakila ako ng electric fan. Tatlo yung electric fan ko sa loob ng clinic despite my air condition. May air condition. So, may electric fan doon sa sahig. <clears throat> may electric fan doon sa likod ko. And the air condition. Asusuotin ako. Magsusuot ako ng ganyan. Maybe on extreme cases wherein yung pasyente eh talagang may ubo, may sakit or whatever kung anong sakit ng pasyente na maaaring mahawa ako, then, yeah, siguro, papayag ako magsuot nito, tiisin ko na lang yung pawis. Parang tayo nag-sona. Di ba? So, but, I I don't think I will wear it every day. I will wear my usual PPE. There are other practical barriers that are out in the internet. I just want to share this to you guys. So, I'm also uh, thinking of getting this, eh, using, uh, of, of, of fabricating one, actually. Sabi ng isang friend ko, um, saan kaya nabibili ito? <laughs> na nabibili? Well, siguro pwede mo ipafabricate na lang sa mga gumagawa ng aluminum or whatever. Pero ito, this one, I observed, this is just pipe. pipe. And it also helps sa aerosol, kung wala kang air evacuator, no? kung wala kang air evacuator, sige, di, ikulong mo yung ulo niya dyan. <laughs> sa plastic na yan. So this one is just tubulars ng mga pipes, no? or mga water pipes. And then, um, itong plastic na to, these are just uh, disposable. Yung mga plastic wrap, they wrap it around. Yun. So, yan, pwedeng disposable, tapon ng tapon. Kung wala kang air evacuator, I think this is good. Pero, <clears throat> I'll think about it. <laughs> Ito naman, glass, o oh, social. It's made of, um, of uh, stainless steel, tapos naglagay siya ng glass on top. But then, problem there, Pag nag-drill ka na with your high speed, mapupuno to ng mist. So, it's not practical. Tsaka, tinan mo malapit yung distance. So, it's not good. Anyway, uh, this is, uh, this, I think this is the end of my presentation. So, uh, I just hope everyone stays home. And thank you all for listening. I hope I was able to impart something. We're dentists. We cannot go out. So we have to stay home and support our frontliners. Tayaan mo ng pagalitan tayo ng mga, mga tao. We have, to, we have also our uh, moral responsibility to keep our healthy in a good, in, in a safe situation. Huwag tayong lumaban sa gera na hindi natin alam kung nasaan yung kalaban natin because it's invisible. So that ends my presentation. Thank you all for listening. If there are more questions, please let me know. Uh, wow. the, I I'm posting my mobile number there and my email address. If you want to ask something, I'd be happy. I'd be glad to answer them for you. Okay. Thank you. Habang bakasyon. Thank you very much, Doctora. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. So, wow. It was a, really a great one hour and ten minutes presentation. We really learn a lot from. De tama lang, doctora. And dami po namin natutunan. And uh, I think uh, it's 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 time for us to entertain some of the question. 
ang daming tanong, ang daming observation. They're really very thankful for it with your with your uh, with your also your protocol. Uh, actually, just to give our viewers uh, a glimpse, I've been to Dr. Lilian's clinic and uh, nakita ko na yung protocol niya before this pandemic happens and all of those all of those protocols are been being observed, no? Kagaya noon sa kanyang uh, reception, malaki yung reception niya pero ngayon uh, magso-social distancing ka na, doktora, tama? So, okay. And, and, and actually, I'm, I, I'm even thinking of working like, uh, like, siguro, uh, uh, parang three days or three days in a week, ganyan, and then mm -hmm. pahinga or something. I don't know. Okay. So, so, so ta talagang, talagang, <laughs> you, talagang, doctora, talagang, you recommend uh, the dental practice should be by appointment only. And what will you do? Strictly by appointment. Pag may mga, hindi, syempre naman, doktora, may mga clinic na may nag-walk in. So, how do you arrest that? How do you entertain them? Yeah. Ito usually na uh, ginagawa ng assistant ko sa, ng secretary sa labas, no? Every patient kasi, alam na namin kung sino yung darating. Pagka may nag-doorbell, alam na namin kung sino yun. Okay. O nandiyan na siya. O minsan tatawag, mag-ring yung phone, o paki, ano yung parking, o mga ganon. Anyway, pag may nag-doorbell, sino ina-expect natin? Wala tayong ina-expect na yun, ha? Uh -huh. Kapag binuksan ng sekretary, as is secretary yung, yung pintuan, hindi niya papapasukin sa, sa sa reception. Hindi talaga papasok sa clinic. Hanggang pintuan lang, yung ulo lang niya nakadungo na gano'n sa pintuan. So, sabi niya, uh, ano po yun? So, hindi niya magpapadental, walk-in, ganyan. Ay, uh, strictly by appointment po si doktora. Ay, kasi kailangan sumasakin niya, okay, punta kayo sa kapitbahay, may mga dental clinic pa dyan. So, we refer these patients <laughs> to other dent neighboring dental clinic. Okay, so yeah. what if, doctora, ito yung question, what if ako yung neighboring clinic? So, how do you, how do you, <laughs> have... <laughs> na, 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 di ba, marami tayong mga, kaibigan diyan marami tayong co-dentist na na may mga talagang sometimes walk in ang bumubuhay sa kanila without without you know yeah. uh, so what what are the advice that we can give them yeah actually yung mga neighbors ko they're very thankful kasi nga pag nakita nila ni secretary we thank you ha nagre-refer kayo ng mga pasyente dito so, so it it also lightens up our heart na oh, we refer patients to them and ang advice na dapat talaga mag-practice ng tamang protocol. And sana, start, start from this time on, start practicing on no, no walk-in, strictly by appointment. Yun. Mm -hmm. Doctora, there's, there's... Sana, a... pero choice pa rin natin yun eh. It it's, depends on how you want to practice. Doctora, there's a question there. Hi, I, I, there's a question. I will post it there. A uh, question from okay. Dr. ABS Lau. May study na po kaya ng aerosol external suction or, or totally nahihigop po. Can you read it there, doktora? Yeah, okay. Nahihigop talaga, as you can see naman in the video. However, uh, yun, especially, okay, going back doon sa practice ko ng mercury-free dentistry, no? Um, mercury is highly toxic. It is a neurotoxin. It affects our nerves. It affects our brain neurons. Uh, so, Pag nakaka-escape yung mercury na yan, nalalanghap ko yan. Pag nalanghap ko yan, eh siguro ulianin na ako. Um, or siguro nagtitremor na ako, or siguro nag-Alzheimer's na ako, or, or nagpa-Parkinson's na ako. I, I should have been exhibiting this kind of neurological disorders kung na-expose ako sa mercury. But, but uh, having experienced the air evacuator in my mercury removal room, it's effective because so far I don't get headaches. But you know, when I was doing the, I was conducting this study sa dental school, syempre ko sasabihin kung saan. We measured the mercury vapor na, na lumalabas sa, uh, ano ba to? Sa, Bibig, uh, no? Kapsul. Sa kapsul. Ah, sa kapsul, yeah. Diba, yeah. tinatriturate, yeah, we yeah, triturate yeah. that. Sa school, tinatriturate yung kapsul. Pag natriturate yun at pag binuksan mo yung, yung capsule na yun, ang emission ng mercury vapor yan, kung palo yan ng mga 11,000 to 23,000 nanograms per cubic meter. Wow, that, that's, that's, that's really high. That's high. Because our body can only bioaccumulate 
180 to 300, maximum 300 nanograms per cubic meter. Mm, nice. Doctor, there's so, also a question. Depend, uh, with that experience of air evacuator in my mercury removal room, I think it's effective. With the study, it will not come out, it will not be recommended kung hindi siya, kung wala siyang, kung wala siyang study. Kasi uh, I'm a part of this group, International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. <coughs> this is based in USA. And this uh, group are scientific evidence-based organization. And without using the air evacuator, uh, talalanghap natin yung, yung vapors. Doctor, no, there's, another, so, there's another. Same there, way with, uh, there's another question. So, there. study. If you want me to wait, if you want me to uh, give you the study or at least give you an example of of how air evacuator works uh, on mercury level, ganyan, Send. Give me your email, and I will uh, send you the link. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, may nagtatanong kasi din dito na uh, yung mga questionnaire form mo. Baka daw pwedeng makahingi yes. ba dyan? Uh, pwede, yes, pwede, bang, actually, pwede bang i-public yan? Public? Yes, yes. Actually, hindi naman akin yung personal eh. Actually, shinare yun ni Dr. Arlisa Aguilus uh -huh. uh, from UP. This form is from the National Institute for Health. Okay. It was formulated by her friend. And uh -huh. pinost niya yun. So, I asked okay. for, uh, she gave it to us and then uh, some have, but some may not have. But if you, you guys don't have it, uh, give me your email or we can post it here sa, yeah. sa page yan, yes. para yes. you Then, just uh, change it or uh, edit it according to your clinic uh, needs. Oh, uh, Doctor, uh, I would I would like to request for a copy so that uh, if, if possible, we can post it in Dental Marketing Philippines so in, any any yes. members or all the dentists can just uh, copy then edit based on their, their, their names, uh, their clinic name. And also, there's a question here, Doctor, but difference between ASM and HBS. So, siguro ito yung aerosol suction machine and high volume suction. So, what's the main difference? What is the difference of aerosol suction machine doon sa high back, uh, volume suction? Yes. No? Yung, yung, yung sa high volume suction, yun, 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 yun yung mga uh, uh, ano ba ito? High vacuum na se may separate unit yan eh. Yung high vacuum, meron ako noon. I, I have it in my clinic uh, doon sa mercury removal room ko. And uh, here, let me just uh, show you. Doktora, di ba yung, ah, yung, yung high volume kasi, hindi ba yung sa live ejector? And, meron pa rin return yun. Oh, yung, eh. So may, may contamination may return, pa rin. Di, di ba, meron tayong isa pang attachment na sa live ejector, high suction. Yung high Correct. suction naman, doon sa, sa na, ano, ginagamit yun for surgery to suction yung ano to ito yung yung, yung high suction ah uh, ito yung ano ko um high suction okay. anyway yung yung high volume na sinasabi mo na naka-attach sa dental chair it Correct. is not good enough para i-suction yung particulates na Correct. Correct. na ini do Correct. during the grinding Yeah. So kailangan pa rin talaga natin ng external ano no no high high vacuum to up you you so escape ng mga aerosol. So what you're saying is we we need aerosol suction machine but also it's a, so, a need for us to so, to have high volume suction, right? Yes, yes. So sabi nga 'di ba sa study hin, yung uh, high suction in the dental chair is not enough. Yes, yes. May study rin nun. Doktora, eye opener sa dentist. Dami po lalo gastos. Kung <laughs> <laughs> nga dami gastos. Maswerte lang ako, matagal na akong gumastos ng aking air evacuator. <laughs> uh, th thank you, DMP and Dr. Yeah, Ebwen. Uh, Dr. Ebwen for this seminar. So these are some of the questions. Another another question, Doktora. Salamat Dr. Mine. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Elisa Aranja. Yes, Doc, same with my protocol. I handle patient by appointment in the afternoon lang up to three patient every after two hours. So I have time to disinfect very the clinic. Good. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah. This one? Actually, yan na yung plan ko in the next time na babalik ako sa clinic. Ito na ng morning. Doctor, another question pa. Dr. Presi CG. How true po or does really give us assurance that this will help to protect us from getting infected? Yung high volume po. Uh, I'm really interested po sa HBE, but I read in the article that it's not that effective in reducing in, in environmental contamination. 
uh, there is no guarantee in yes. anything Correct. na gamit natin. There's none. Even for the mercury removal room, do sa mercury removal room, there it's not I don't even guarantee my patient na oh, hindi ako ma hindi ka na, despite na maglagay ko ng rubber dam, may high suction ako, naka-oxygen ka. See, he, he, despite all this, he, he, there's no guarantee na hindi tayo mahawa. So we still have to do extra precautionary measures. Correct. By the Correct. way, doon sa mercury room, no? Remember kanina to avoid to also protect your patients from getting um, contaminated from these aerosols and all, no? Look at this. Yan. I-share ko lang ulit. Itong patient, yung full face is covered, meron siyang face shield. And then that, naka-rubber dam yan. And then here, this is a nose hood. This nose hood is connected to the oxygen tank. So, I suggest we start also protecting our patient. Oxygen helps a lot sa breathing ng pasyente natin. Look, para, oh, yeah. pwede, na, pwede, pwede, pwede na ba ito? Ang ganda na yan. Kahit we, pag nag-webinar, kailangan pa ba ito? Webinar. Pag webinar. Hindi <laughs> na. <laughs> At saka ito, ito, doktor. Hindi na. Ito, ito yung sinasabi mo yan. natin. Oo, so, yes. Dapat, da, yes. Dapat, yes. See, may mga lilit na squares yan. Putong ka ng putong. Oo, putong ng putong. At ka na maubos so, yan eh. Dapat po marami to. Ganda, no? So, actually, marami kaming ganito. So, kailangan po natin to. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, pero kailangan. Hindi ako nagbebenta nito. So, maraming supplier dyan. Okay? So, yeah. Maraming supplier another, yan. There, there's another comment from Dr. Pam. Dr. Pam, uh, thank you very much for from Cebu. <laughs> and also... Mother. Uh, Ikaw talaga, Pam. Uh, uh, congratulations for... Cholo, hello. Hello. Congratulations, Congratulations kasi <laughs> preg pregnant yata si Doktora, okay? So Doktora, yeah, mga anak na yan. Another que an Doktora, another question. How about po yes. sa removal? Ayan, that one. Yeah. Yeah. where do you think we can properly place it since we cannot wash it immediately also sa treatment area pa lang po? I-remove na ng patient ang PPE? Yes. Yes. So after, like, Doon sa, ano, no, after ko gawin, gawin yung pasyente, when I, before I leave the room, tanggal na yung PPE, pati gloves, bahala na yung assistant, mangulekta niyan. And then we have a big basura bag, that plastic, that basura bag doon niya ilalagay lahat. And then, at the end of the day, you uwi ko yun, ready for laundry. But when you laundry it, please don't laundry it together with your house clothes or your, your other clothes. Separate mo siyang ilo-laundry. At the same time, Pag dirinay mo siya, well, pwede mo siyang i-dryer. So, dryer, di ba mainit? So, mamamatay ni mga bacteria at mga microorganisms doon. Or kung walang dryer, ibilag sa sampayan. Yes, doktora. Wala akong dryer. Ah. <laughs> Sampay ko lang. <laughs> Ay, kunwari pa siya. Anyway, doktora. Uh, Wala tama, dryer. <laughs> tama yung sinabi mo kasi ang advice ko rin sa mga, sa mga dental clinic, you should have a laundry bin inside your clinic na may cover. So every time you take out your PPE and also yung mga ginamit na pasyente, make sure na doon ilalagay and naka-cover. Tama po, doktora? Yeah. Yung plastic na ginagamit, I mean, yung black basura bag, yun, yung black basura bag doon. Apo. So, so doktora, every day meron kami yung bitin pa uwi. We really yeah. have to wait for the... <laughs> so may mga... May mga... Yeah. May mga apo. Still risky for us to open our clinic. I know that. Yes, Doctora, this is this is a question I would like you to I I would like you to read. Uh, what's the role of proper questioning? Kasi may may role talaga yung secretary natin eh sa ating practice. So what are the what the, are the other learnings that we must provide for the secretaries based on your experience and what do you want to achieve uh, when this enhanced community quarantine were lifted? Well, syempre, we have to orient our secretary, our staff our clinic staff, we have to orient them on how to do the correct protocols now. Change, talagang total change yung operations clinic. So, kailangan, uh, okay, uh, when we handle with patients, so syempre hindi na masyadong close distance, so medyo uh, spacing na. Kaya dun sa reception table pa lang, so put a, put a small seat on or whatever para hindi sila masyadong lalapit and all. Yun. And always in, uh, Orient your patient, uh, your staff 
or even yung secretary, yung secretary nga dapat pag tumawag yan for for patient's appointment to confirm their appointment, make sure na na darating or hindi darating, kung hindi darating good. <laughs> pag dumating, okay, <laughs> be ready, di ba? Pero pag dumating, at least be ready in such a way na alam mo na i-handle yung pasyente na, okay, so dito ka muna po, we fill up this form, kasi this is a, a questionnaire for, uh, to protect both both ways, no? protect you, protect us, so we we are, you are in a safe zone, safe zone where you cannot uh, be contaminated with any virus. Because so the this, is, is, yeah. uh, this is a very good, this is a very good observation. Actually, this is very much relevant to my, my uh, questions or I'm thinking about the clinic opening. Because eh. Sabi ni Dr. Luz, Hi, Dr. Lilian, would you recommend that we dentists and clinic staff take the COVID test before we start opening our clinic? So after you have answered yes. this, I have a follow-up question with after, after this, Dr. Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, iniisip ko yan nung last week pa. Kaya lang, sabi sa news, hindi, hindi, pinaprioritize nila yung mga may symptoms. So I don't know kung kanino ko connect para mag-undergo ng, ng test before we open our clinic just to make sure na parang hindi wala tayong virus or hindi tayo affected with with COVID. Parang eh, it's a social responsibility for our patient na hindi natin sila mahawa. It's an assurance, di ba? Pero given uh, that si- having that situation, okay, nag-clinic tayo ngayon. We don't know for the whole week kung ma-expose tayo or what. Correct. Diba? Kaya Correct. dapat nga, parang hospital dapat eh, di ba? Parang Ang, ang hirap na, di ba? Mag, mag-clinic ka. You can do clinic the whole week. Stay ka lang doon. Huwag kang uuwi para hindi mo makontaminate o hindi mo mahawa o possible na mahawa yung mga kamag-anak mo, yung pamilya mo. Yung, okay. Parang one week work. And then pahinga ka for 14 days. Kasi may, titina mo rin yung health mo na, okay, may symptoms mo na lalabas or what. Mag-observe ka for so 14 days, bakasyon tayo. Di ba? <laughs> And then, after 14 days, pwede na tayo magtrabaho ulit. So parang every 14 days ang work, yun yung iniisip ko eh for the past weeks, parang ang sarap ata mag-clinic na ganun. <laughs> Kaya lang, pag nag-clinic tayo, doon lang tayo sa, ano, sa clinic natin. Or we rent uh, a room or something. I don't know. We're not sure. Paano tayo, ano, hindi makapaginip. Eh, hey, Doktora, so ang, ang actually may naisip nga ako dyan na uh, if for you to Gusto mo talagang safe na safe ka. Can we do like getting a medical certificate before accepting patients? That would be, kasi doktora, uh, difficult, no? Kasi ha- having having your patient or you or in your clinic or your staff tested is 5,000 to 8,000 per test. And getting them mm-hmm. to the, go to the clinic and get medical certification is just probably uh, 500 consultation fee for the doctors. What is your thought on that? Mahirap yun. Kasi sumasakit na yung ito, baka pagpalitan pa tayo ng pasyente, di ba? So, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, ewan ko kung pwede to, but then, what I'm thinking is, pa-exercise yung pasyente sa labas, like, hold yung breath, di ba? Sabi niya, you hold your breath for 10 seconds or 15, kung kaya mo i-hold yung breath mo, <coughs> na humiga ka na malalim, pag hindi umubo yung pasyente, okay, pwede ka. <laughs> but then, you can really tell, kasi mga pasyente rin, may mga COVID virus carriers na asymptomatic, walang ubo. Walang That's the problem. Ubo. That's the problem. But they are carrier. So we cannot really care. We don't know when. We don't even know na safe talaga. We may have all these gadgets and equipments. We may have a lot of money to buy all these gadgets and equipments. Pero we're not really sure kung protected talaga tayo. Eh. There's no guarantee. Correct, correct. Correct. Doktora, there's, Alam there's mo, an... isa pa, iniisip ko dyan, gusto ko na mag Retire. <laughs> ano? Ah, mag-retire. <laughs> diba? Parang masarap na mag-retire. Early retirement. Oh, Early na- retirement. <laughs> Pero kawawa na. And isa pang, isa, isa pang iniisip ko, isa pang iniisip ko, I, I will not accept pay, new patients anymore. I-maintain ko na lang yung existing clients ko. para sila na lang. Ngayon, pag may new patient, refer na lang sa ibang <clears throat> dentist. Kasi marami naman tayong dentist na kailangan din ng patient, diba? Doktora, i-refer mo sa KGR clinic, ha? Yeah, pwede. And then, there's another question here. <laughs> do we still allow, no, I think you have answered this a while ago. Do we still allow companions is inside our reception area? No more. No, no more. more. No more na. Dati ay allow kasi may space, pero wala na. 
hindi na pwede by this time kasi baka sa gabal siya. <laughs> sa gabal, sa gabal na? siya sa sa gabal so, siya. Na, so in, sa gabal siya at the same time yung operation mo alam mo yun tatamtamaan mo siya. So na, so in case doktora at uh, eh paano yung kung, kung yung companion niya yung mother niya na magbabayad for example. The we do uh, the, the <laughs> mother yeah. diyan muna sa labas. <laughs> So, the, so talagang, you will not allow that in your clinic. Yeah, alam mo ba, when I handle kids, syempre, yung mga kids yung sinasamahan ng nanay, di ba? Uh-huh. So, ang ginagawa ko, pagkabata, minsan ang nanay, adilantada eh, pag pumasok sa loob ng treatment. Alam mo, uh-huh. nasisira yung moment mo. Correct, correct. To communicate with the, with the bata, uh-huh. no? with the child. So, what I tell the parent, Mommy, take a look lang dito. Papasok kami, ni ng anak mo. So, pagpasok kami, pag ginawa ko yung anak mo, anak niya, kakausapin ko siya like an adult. Tapos, kung meron man procedure na gagawin doon sa bata, lalabas ako, kakausapin ko yung nanay. Okay, ito yung procedure na gagawin namin. Approve or not? Sign. O, parang ganyan. So, pag hindi approve, okay, palalabasin ko na yung bata. <laughs> Pero usually, nag approve naman sila. Well, it's uh, it's just a matter of uh, yung patient, yung parent, ang patient put their trust on you. It's a matter of trust. Well, anyway, hindi naman darating yung pasyente dyan kung walang tiwala sa'yo, di ba? Correct, correct. And this is, ano, this is something that everybody would want to know, probably, how much do you think will change in terms of value-based rate? O sabihin natin, padaliin ko yung tanong, magkano na ngayon ang pabunot? Magkano na ngayon yung papasta? Oh, ano? Magkano na ngayon ang pakining? Yeah. With all the things that needs to be considered in terms of buying other equipments. Actually, I, 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 I've, uh, have, I have a suggestion in my lecture, but based on your, kasi okay. mas, mas maganda yung practice mo eh. High-end practice eh. No? So, we wanted no, to know. <laughs> Ayoko lang magbigay ang presyo. <laughs> Not in public. <laughs> okay. Sige, sige, doktora. We, well, we will, definitely uh, maapektuhan. Well, okay, uh, ganito yan. Definitely maapektuhan ang operations natin because we have extra equipment. Kailangan din natin ma-recover yung return of investment, di ba? So what do we do? Siguro, in, compute, compute mo in a year, ilang pasyente bago mo uh, makuha yung ROI ng yung equipment na binili mo and all Very that. So good. kami yung idadagdag mo na fee for using that equipment to your patient. Yes, yun. Doktor, yeah, tama po yan, doktor. I, I, I have a computation. If you want... Kasi yung re- recommendation natin, Yun, uh, ba- based, on my, hindi, hindi, based on my recommendation, one PPE, one patient. Tama po. Yes. So if, yes. We do have, if we do have five appointments on that day, and anim po yung dumating, you are not allowed to accept that one patient because you only have five PPEs. So one patient, one PPE. After, after one patient, you remove that, put it in the laundry bin, sealed it, then bring it home, then laba. So actually, yun po ang recommendation. Then how are you gonna charge? Remember, yung PPE binaman po ay washable, hindi naman washable. po yung dispo- disposable. So you just try yeah. to compute that PPE is for six months. You compute it for mm-hmm. divided by uh, five patients per day. So probably that would cost you around uh, eight pesos to ten pesos for that PPE alone. So per if patient. you're going to uh, po, per patient, so that's a good computation. Course. So if you're going to add. Uh, uh, double gloves, then you just add probably another 5 pesos each, so 10 pesos. So probably mm-hmm. 100, sorry sa price, pero uh, uh, I think I think on the regular average based on the 97% of, of uh, single proprietorship medical practice, a eh, dental practice in the Philippines, probably you, if I may, siguro uh, mm-hmm. 1,200 to 2,000 is now the new norms for ordinary dental practice with regards to prophylaxis. But of course, other high-end clinic, 2, 5, 5,000, depende po. So, but that, that is not uh, mm-hmm. official yet, but that is what we're going to do in our practice, doctora. So... Yeah, siguro, anyway, nasa marketing ka, no? So, kami, mahina kami sa mat, yan, kami <laughs> <dentist> stay, <laughs> <laughs> So, what you do, make computations, and then yes. siguro i-post mo yung recommendation mo, pero sana naman hindi kita ng mga pasyente yung pinipost mo. Oo nga, oo nga. But anyway, siguro alam din naman nila that nine dentists are or 99. Maybe recommended rates for whatever. And then it's up to us if we will follow or not follow. Uh, hindi na to. So medical clearance. Discretion so... pa rin naman namin yun eh. 
Doctora, this one. This is another question. Have you had any concerns whatsoever with the uh, with uh, other? For example, Doctora, diba you have been implementing a very very stiff medical or infection control in your clinic. Have you had any other problems with your pre ECQ infection control protocol? Problem? Um, ano problem? For example, nagka 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 lumabas ba yung Actually, aerosol? Actually, wala. Well, thank you, Lord. Wala pa naman ako <laughs> nagiging na encounter na problema sa sa mga pasyente about infection and mm. wala pa namang na infect sa mga ano. Kasi even the the water that they use for gargling, ano yun eh? Um, binibili ko yun eh. By the, mm -hmm. by the five gallons yun eh, di ba? Yun yung uh -huh. pinangmumumog nila eh. So, it's clean. And then, yeah, yung pipes mo, dapat parating malinis. So, siguro, buong sa mga... Doctor, there's another question. Can we still practice? Solution. All, all zone. Ito, ito yeah. magandang, magandang tanong, Doctor. Can we still practice all the things mentioned in your lecture without all the things mentioned in the... I think the answer is literally no, no? No. <laughs> not now. Not in not, this time. Not, not in this time. Or else, kung wala kang gamit, early retirement. Ako, yun eh. Kung wala kang gamit, I, I go for early retirement. Nag-enjoy naman ako dito sa bahay for the past one month and a half. Wow. So, ibig sabihin, uulitin natin ito. Uulitin natin ito. Masaya, dito sa masarap, masarap, masarap sa bahay, ano? Kaya lang, hirap din ang isip. Kakain mo sa umaga at ang halit. <laughs> There's another question. Hindi mo siguro. Doctora Mine, Doctora, you still have time to answer, huh? Yes, no. Uh, yeah, Doctora Mine. Nalaman tayo nilakad. You can answer this question, Doctora. Uh, pose on the screen. Does the ozone machine same as the UV light room sterilizer? Ano po more effective in your opinion? Sorry for it. Ah, no. UV, yung UV, yung UV light, yung UV light is just to keep the in uh, environment of your your storage clean parang maintenance lang siya but it's not sterilized uh, it's not a sterilizing uh, procedure mm. okay. okay and doctor doctor what's your email sabi ni doctor burn kunanan ayun yung pangalan ko po lilian.ebuen at gmail.com double n po yung lilian or you can send me a message sa mobile number 0917-898-2717. Okay. So, yeah. so pinablish na ni Doktor ang kanyang uh, cell phone number. So, you can... Uh, May timely, post kanina doon sa last slide. Yes, yes. Timely webinar for us, Denti. So, I think we really do appreciate your yes. presence tonight before going to take our Thank dinner. Thank you for the appreciation. Uh, uh, po, ang dami pong nanood, <laughs> ang dami pong nagtanong, and we really are doing this for for all our beloved dentists and we're just very fortunate tonight that uh, we do have one of my favorite dentists uh, uh, actually hindi lang sa pagiging dentista no uh, basta personally I, I really love talking to their family na <laughs> doktora uh, for for your information to sa ating po mga viewers uh, doktora Lilian is part of Kaboklod Foundation where we bring students to to education hopefully maging mga dentists yung mga yan and uh, so far, we're, we're doing okay. And uh, with that, Doctora, siguro ang dami pong humahabol na tanong, you're planning to retire. Yeah. <laughs> si Doctora Hans. <laughs> Gusto ko nang mag-retire. <laughs> Gusto ko nang mag-retire. Araw-araw pong umaga, nagbukas ako ng Facebook. I know, not Facebook, ng YouTube eh. Di ba, pagbukas ng YouTube, ay nako, inisip ko, mag-farming na lang tayo. Tingnan mo nga to. <laughs> mag-farming tayo ng free range chicken mamaya yeah. nagbake naman ako kung ano lang <laughs> kung ano lang na iniisip ko kasi parang we have to keep our mind na uh, going kasi parang ano yeah. so i think uh, we have we have yeah, re planning we to have retire soon <laughs> uh, so i think we have rich uh, luzon bisayas mindanao and ncr for this particular lecture we do appreciate your support rest assured that dental marketing will try my best and my team's best to really bring you the, the the topic that will definitely aid your practice just like today we have learned a lot uh, from uh, her protocol before and even after the protocol there her plans so we really appreciate dr lilian your final message to all the dentists of watch you all over the philippines Doctora. 
thank you all for listening. It is a pleasure to share what I, what I do, what we do. And it's all up to us if we continue to do the practice of doing good dentistry work or not. But right now, we stay home, continue to keep learning about dental education and daming webinars, daming uh, Zoom lectures, and daming IG Live and everything. So this is the perfect time for us to study a lot of uh, a lot of dental topics and excited nga ako bumalik sa clinic eh, kasi kasi dami ko nang natututunan and i want to apply it thank you all for listening i really wow. appreciate it thank you so wow. much thank for you for the opportunity to share from the bottom of my heart alam mo na yon thank you very much uh, maraming maraming salamat sa mga nanood maraming salamat po sa so, uulitin daw sabi ng mga nanood uh, uh, maraming salamat sa inyo and uh, so hanggang dito na lang si doktora Maraming salamat. We have taken so much of our time, but uh, rest assured sa mga dental marketing Philippines natin, hindi natin uh, sasabihin na ito yung huling lecture ni Doktora. Actually, she is my first Milan lecturer, but today, uh, another lecture, but we will do it more as, as I will try to get her schedule. Doktora, thank you very much po. Maraming salamat, Doktora. Yeah, um, let me just, ano, let me just uh, plug, meron ako another webinar lecture. Yes, yes, with, yes. Uh, dental uh, domain. Sa Saturday, Dental Domain. So they invited me to lecture about biomimetic dentistry. So I'm going to discuss about the science behind biomimetic dentistry. Yeah. And also PAED, syempre, I'm pa past PAED. So in PAED, I will also do uh, uh, not, uh, lecture with PAED yes. uh, sometime in May. Thank you very much again, Doctora. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with that, uh, we have come into conclusion that, uh, you know, uh, this is a great day for all of us. So again, we will have another lecture. We will have another seminar. So kagaya po ng sabi ko. Ay, yes, what happened? Hello, yes, yes. So we have come to a conclusion. Now uh, we're going to show you some of the, some of the, uh, wait, uh, Okay. Hello. So we will have another one that's going to be on April 24. So April 24, 10 a.m. We're going to have introduction to Magic Core Minimally Invasive Implant. So this is a one-hour lecture. I hope you can join us and uh, so that we can provide you an introduction to implant dentistry. So we're going to have a Korean-based uh, international sales doctor will be doing the lecture for this and another one there will be uh ito naman po. i think uh, everybody needs this one and i'm very very happy that i'm part of faith hope love this is a dental marketing philippines sponsored seminar for all the dentists because we have to be faithful we have to be hopeful and we have to love also as we celebrate life and we celebrate our profession so with that with that, we are Dental Marketing Philippines. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nanood. Doktora Ace, Doktora Luz Biminta, Doktora Ann, Doktora Kilino, Doktor Saraya, Doktora Corinne, Doktora Kay. Alam niyo na po sa inyo lahat. Maraming salamat. And this is the end of tonight's presentation. Good night.